Oh, those are some pretty clouds. Hey, what's up, garden friends? You guys, you're right here. So, things are wonky this week. I lost all of my footage for the vlog. I didn't realize this until it was time to sit down and edit the vlog. So I actually already filmed like a little sit down, chit chat, just like rambling thing that I do. That'll be later on. First, I want to do some plant stuff and I want everybody's opinion on something. I have this really big pot here, nice big, I want to say it's a 30 inch planter, I think. Now, I had a Robolini palm in there. The Robolini succumbed to Petiofracus blight. I treated it for months and months and months. <sighs> the problem is every time it would rain or it would get moisture, the fungus would just get worse and worse and worse. And I mean, it's a plant, you have to water it, but I'd water it and it would get worse and I kept treating it. It just didn't happen. It got to a point where I said, all right, done with you. Or it was done with me, really. So I went ahead, I pulled the palm out, and it had, you know, a bunch of plants in there with it, some different pakistakis and whatnot. I don't want to reuse those uh, because they were in the same soil where that fungal infection was present. So I have this pot. I've sanitized it. I sprayed it down very, very, very heavily with a bleach solution. And I got very mesmerized by the rainbows while I was doing so. And uh, yeah, so it's ready to go. I need to give it a good rinse but I'm not getting to it in this vlog. Here's why, I, like I said, I need your opinion. Now, as I've mentioned before, and we'll mention again later on when I'm doing my sit down chit chat, this corner has been bugging me. And I think that's partially because this Adenidia palm, one, it's too far back, and I don't like that it's in its nursery pot. I'm thinking it may be a good candidate to go in that other pot that will look much, much, much nicer and tidier over here, and I need to shift and just, I just need to rearrange. There's a problem. The problem is that it's barely going to fit in here. It'll fit, but it's gonna be snug. And that's okay for a palm tree. They don't mind things being snug, but I want to be able to plant a lot of stuff in this pot as well. And if the root mass is taking up the, the entirety of the pot, then, well, I can't, I'm not gonna put much in there. Maybe lots of little annuals and stuff like that, but it would be nice to be able to go ahead and throw in like a hibiscus and, you know, some things that might come back every year and do well. So I'm thinking I maybe might need to go get a larger pot for that Edenidia palm. That's something I take very seriously though because these big pots are very expensive. Even though this one right here, this is just fiberglass. Super cheap or plastic, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I mean, they're different materials. It's thin, but it was still expensive. Also, I got this off of Amazon and I can't find this particular pot anywhere. Generally, when you step up to the larger pots, you just get big plastic pots that look like giant terracotta pots. I'm not a huge fan of them, but they're kind of one of the only options when you start to get really, really big, unless you're willing to spend an awful lot of money, which I'm not. In fact, that's one of the reasons this whole corner over here, I always have plants piled around this big Alexander palm, because I hate the pot. So you see what I'm talking about there? That I painted it, which didn't really help very much, but... I'm not a big fan of how they look. It'll do, but I'm not crazy about it. Also, yeah, the pink sky petunias, that they, they don't like me. We did not get along. Whatever they're potted up in just retained too much moisture and uh, that they, they, they drowned. It's my fault, I'll take responsibility for it, but I mean, come on, you're a petunia. How are you gonna be so delicate? Although that is a saying, isn't it? Such a delicate little petunia. Is that something people say? I feel like it is. All of my other petunias are fine, not the pink skies though. The other thought I've had with this pot, and I really like the idea of this, is to actually, you know, I planted this whole entire cactus succulent area up, and I'm not positive how much I like it. I mean, I like it, I need to move those hoses back, which I discussed in the last garden tour. Yeah, it was the garden tour. But I really do feel like this motif, this little design, would look pretty good over here in this pot. I mean, you know, the big Pruvianus in there with some agaves, the barrel cactus, and the spurge. It would be nice. And I could put the succulent trailers, portulaca or something else, coming over the front. There'd be more color in there. And I could even put the pot right here. I can level this out and it'll fit right in the spot. So the location still works. But that way, every year, I'm not going to be having to dig this out and lift the plants back out. Because these aren't planted in here. This is all faux planted. They're still in their nursery pots. I'm in zone 6B. None of, none of this is going to live here. Well, 
those guys will, but not, not these guys. And the advantage to doing this would be that I don't have to go through the hassle during the winter time of finding places for all of these plants separately. I'm not going to put all of these in that pot, but just doing a fun like desert arrangement, cactus and succulent type thing, I feel like that would look really, really cool. And like I said, it would be nice during the winter time because I can just pick this pot up. I can just grab this pot and just throw it on a dolly and have it all together in one place and not have these bigger cactus kind of spread around because the cactus are always kind of chaotic for me in the winter time. They're a little bit harder for me to place because mostly everything I keep in my grow space and my garage, which I wrap in plastic and keep it warm and humid, well, they don't like that warm and humid. So it's, it's always harder. I'll have them all to... Do you get what I'm saying? So, in a nutshell, what I'm going for, you guys tell me. Big Adenidia palm with little annuals and tropicals coming over the front, or cactus and succulent planter. Large scale cactus and succulent planter. Because like I said, I think in the long run, it would just make more sense to put that Adenidia palm in something a little bit bigger because it is just barely going to fit in here. I'm gonna take the time to repot it because it's not gonna be easy. That thing is very, very heavy then I, I may as well just go ahead, suck it up, and get a larger pot. It's going to take some time. I have to shop around for it. If all I can find are those terracotta ones, then I will paint it. Probably not neon blue and green like last time. But I'll figure something else out. And that's why I'm asking you guys. Cactus or Adenidia, partially because I'm going to need some time to get the materials. I have plenty of potting mix. Well, for the Adenidia palm. It's not going to take a lot of soil with the root mass that's already there. For the cactus and succulents, that's going to be different. I need to get some things to amend the soil with to make it appropriate for cactus and succulents. Okay, so you guys let me know down in the comments. Adenidia or desert planter? On a separate note, this bird of paradise is very sad. It needs to be repotted. So, uh, it's gonna do that. Yeah, you know, the bird of paradise, they don't mind being root bound some, but this is, it's clearly, it's just, it's not having it. It's also, this one had a heavy infestation of the mealy bugs on it, so it has been sprayed and sprayed and sprayed. With the heat we've been having though, I think it's, it's just time to go ahead and bump it up a notch. All right, and here's my pot. Not that one, so that would be a lot prettier. I'm using this one. It's just a standard nursery pot. The reason with the bird of paradise and uh, I have, there's other plants I do this with too. But the reason I keep them in the black nursery pots is one, because they're really cheap. And sometimes I actually go ahead and I dig a hole and I sink the whole entire pot into the ground or so plant them is what that would be called. And uh, I don't see a reason to use a big expensive pot for that. And uh, this is a good size jump. It's not huge, it's not too little. I think this is, this is just fine. Go ahead and get these weeds out of there. May as well do that now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lay you on your side, just like that. And I could go ahead and try and pull this from its pot, but instead I'm going to go ahead and use a blade and cut it out. That way I'm just disturbing as little bit of the roots as possible. It's just, it's already so stressed. Why make it worse? Ooh, those are some nice big roots. Very root bound. Though uh, I've seen Bird of Paradise, the Strelitzia is much worse than this before. It's just overall for the recovery of the plant, it's gonna do better with some fresh mix. I'm not going to do a ton to loosen the root memory. I'll go ahead and run my fingers around it and try and kind of branch out some of those guys at the bottom. But this isn't gonna be anything special. I'm also not using any kind of fancy mix. This is just miracle Grow potting mix. The last few batches I've bought were pretty good. They were draining pretty fast. I don't really think I need to add anything to it for this plant. For other plants, I usually add stuff to it. Bird of Paradise are tough though. Now, in an ideal world, I would have some compost to mix in there, some nice, fresh, rich, organic matter, but I, I don't have that, so this is, this is how it's going to be. I can later amend the top with some compost. I'm picky about compost. Monrovia used to sell a really awesome soil amend, but uh, I, I think they still do, but none of my nurseries have it, so I need to just find a new brand that I like really well. I would love to have a compost bin of my own, but there's just, there's absolutely nowhere, nowhere to do that. Okay, the sun's on my viewfinder. Hopefully you can see all of this, but yeah, you see that? I used to not be thrilled with Miracle Potting, Miracle, with the Miracle Grow Potting mix. Uh, I liked Stay Green for a long time, but it's changed in the Stay Green, the last few bags I've bought, really holding in way too much moisture. And just the standard Miracle Grow, I feel like I'm saying that really weird. It's actually not that bad. It's sandy. There's a little bit of food in there. And 
bark chips, which I don't remember that having before, but maybe it did. There are definitely better mixes out there, but with the volume of plants that I have to deal with every single year, it just financially would not make sense to go for a big expensive brand. And um, I'm actually fairly pleased with this. It's a little bit heavy on the peat, but not as much as some of the others. So I'm just going to kind of bring that up on the sides a little bit and just bring it on in here. There we go. So this is, it's up a little bit higher than the edge of the pot. I don't actually mind that for this plant, only because it's not a huge bump up in the size of the pot, and this is going to allow the water to run off a little bit more into this area, which in the long run should help encourage the roots to spread out and uh, not continue with that root-bound behavior. I did go through and loosen that up a little bit, but no, I think that this is this is just fine. And you can see that there's there's some loose soil up here, so it's really not that far up. Also, I did, I'm did i reusing this pot, and I did sanitize it and rinse it, and it's been sitting in storage, so it's kind of dusty, but it's safe to use. All right, and this is about three-quarters of the way full. I go through, I shift it around, let the soil move on down there, and I did decide I'm going to add a little bit of the Espomo plant tone. It just helps enrich the soil, get the good bacteria and fungi and stuff going, just to help the roots start to do their thing. So does this stuff go bad? Because it, it smells really, it smells horrible. Let's hope not. Go ahead and get that kind of spread around. I like to do it, I should have done it probably, you know, at the bottom right here and right here. My main thing is that it's below the soil line so that it can sort of work its way down and make everybody nice and happy and do its thing. Watering this in, I've already done that a little bit, but uh, the phone overheated. You can see that soil's actually draining pretty nice fairly quickly. Very nice, actually. I'm pleased with it. See, look at that. Here we go. Is it in focus? I can't see my screen. Yeah. So, um, there are batch inconsistencies. I think I talked about that a while ago. And I'm not endorsing or saying, like, I love miracle Grow. I'm just saying, for the cost, this is what's working really well for me. And, uh, I think it would be fun to do a comparison test. Might be getting a little bit late in the season. I'm not sure. That might be an interesting thing to do. Maybe let me know down in the comments if there are certain brands that I should do that with. Okay, now typically I would go through and chop some of the bad foliage off, but it doesn't have much as it is, so whatever chlorophyll is in here, it needs. So, because that's where the, everything gets turned to sugar and the whole, whole photosynthesis process happens. Speaking of not trimming this off, you may remember in last week's vlog and the garden tour I had mentioned I that I didn't want to prune this foliage off of my sago palm yet because it's flushing out and it needs what energy it can get to flush that out. And when it flushes that out, then I would go ahead and do the trimming. Well, look at how much this has grown. This is since Monday. Today is Friday. Look at that. I mean, it's not shocking. This is, this is how they do. But it just, it fascinates me. I love it. So if you saw the garden tour, that was like a couple videos ago. This was, you know, probably this high. Then the vlog prior to that, it was like this high. So much fun watching it grow. I am going to let it come out a little bit more because see how the fronds, they're still kind of pliable and uh, they're normally stiff on these guys. So I'm going to go ahead and let that finish doing its thing. It still has some little guys on the inside. Once this comes out and they firm up, I'll go ahead and prune that off and maybe reposition it, because I've been trying to get this guy to straighten its growth out for some time now, like several years. I know it doesn't look like it, but I think it's going to rain. It's breezy, the clouds are big, and the temperature's kind of dropping a little bit, which is amazing because it's supposed to be like, I think, 83 degrees tomorrow. Oh, I'm so excited. Gonna be getting a lot of yard work done while it's that cool. That doesn't happen often in July. Seriously, I just restaked that guy will not stay up. And I don't want to mess with it too much because that could like actually really affect it. If you keep pulling on it and everything, it, it could end up breaking. Not really breaking, just stressing the roots out. And I, I don't want to do that, especially while it's in bloom. It's so pretty. Now, people have asked me how the vanilla orchid's doing, or maybe it was one person. Oh, here it is. Not much has changed. I've had it sitting up here backwards because I'm afraid to expose it to the sun because it's variegated. And so I've just been kind of slowly very, very, very slowly bringing it this way. But yeah, it's got nice new growth down here. Not doing much right there, but another new growth over here. So it's not going crazy, but it is doing, it's doing pretty well. Okay, this is when I say goodbye to those of you that 
like really aren't interested in just listening to me sit and ramble because that's about what's coming up next. So if that's not your thing, I get it. That's cool. So don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, upload multiple times a week. My social media is down below and I enjoy following everybody back and looking at plant pictures, all that fun youtube -y stuff that we're supposed to say. And I actually do mean it. Just, you know, saying the same thing over and over again gets a little redundant, but it's part of it. I really do hope everybody's doing well though. And uh, yeah, don't forget to let me know about the planter. Should we go with the Adenidia or the, um, the desert planter? I'm leaning more towards the desert planter, but you guys let me know. Oh, there was one other thing I forgot to mention with making this decision. One of the reasons I'm torn is because, well, one of them's gonna cost me money. I'll have to buy a new pot. In the long run, I think I'm gonna have to do that anyways, because it's it's gonna be a tight fit with the Adenidia palm in here. And this Adenidia, though it's hard to see back here because it's not working out on top of the milk crates, this is actually a grade A palm. Palms come in, you know, A, B, C. You, A is the best. You want nice, thick, full trunks, healthy crown shafts, healthy foliage. Yeah, it's a nice palm. And when I repot it, whatever I end up potting it into, I would like, to, I'm not just gonna use miracle Grow for that. I'm going to amend a very nice, organically rich mixture that drains well. Just, I wanted to have a little bit more space, but this would do for right now. So do I settle or go big and get creative and just make fun things happen? Let me know. Things are a little bit different this week because I lost all my footage. So I typically do my weekly vlogs with my phone or one of my smaller cameras, sometimes a mix of the both. This week, pretty much everything was on my phone. Why is that relevant? I have a Samsung. And I don't know if you're up to snuff with things in tech world and whatnot, but uh, Samsung, they've been a little bit naughty, a little bit sloppy with their software. And basically what happened is people's phones just started sending out their pictures, some cases their entire photo albums to people in text messages. And it doesn't even show in your text messages that that's happened. So you don't know until somebody's like, hey, I just got like 900 pictures from you. So when I found out about that, I was like, okay, I have like probably some sensitive material in there. Like I take screenshots of all my invoices and all my email attachments end up getting saved into my photo album. I don't know why. I, I think that's something I did though. Like I set up, whatever the case, I said, okay, I'm just to be safe. I'm gonna go ahead and clear all my pictures and videos off of my phone. So I backed them up. Not a big deal. Took a while, but needed to be done anyways. I can't find my files for this week's vlog. I think I accidentally deleted them. Whoops. So here we are. I'm ready to like sit down and start to edit things and it, 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 everything's gone. But that's okay. Changes things a little bit. Mostly in the sense of like, I'm not really going anywhere doing anything in this video probably, but there is plenty of work to be done. It's 94 degrees right now. It's about nine in the morning. It's going to be a toasty one, which does impact things to do. You know, in your garden, it's not usually a great idea to be planting things when it's super, super hot outside. Early in the morning, a little bit more okay, but I mean, it's like I said, it's like 930 and already 94, so I don't I don't think that opportunity was around for today. So I'm gonna take it easy with planting things in sunny locations. I'm, I'm mostly, honestly, I have just, I've been watering. I've been watering like crazy. When it's crazy, crazy hot outside, you gotta get out in the morning and just drench, absolutely soak your plants. Cause it's not great to water them in the heat of the day, generally between 10 and two, which does kind of depend on where you lay in the latitude of the world. But where I am it, in most places, if it's 100 degrees outside, one o'clock in the afternoon, it's not great to water the plants. But if they're bone dry, if you if that soil's dry, water them. I mean, just, you know, be careful. Let the hot water run out of the hose and whatnot. You need to keep your soil somewhat damp. People worry about boiling the roots. You can, you know, throw a cloth or something, put some sticks around. Like over here, for example, right there. See this impatient? Yeah, very, very, very unhappy with me. I don't know why I've been watering it like insanity, but yesterday it decided to wilt. So I guess when I was watering, I didn't, it didn't get enough direct water or the heat. More than likely it was because that one's closest to the front. There's a lot of heat radiating, a lot of heat radiating up from the ground onto it. And uh, it cooked it, wilted it down. I still went ahead and I watered it, but I was gentle with the watering. 
main thing is I just didn't want the soil around it to be dry because there's lots of good things in your soil. If you let it dry out for too terribly long when it's scorching hot, all the beneficial bacteria and fungi and whatnot, you're going to start to lose some of that and get some die off. And I want to keep all that around to have a nice healthy root system around the plants. So that's what's going on there. It's just been a lot of watering. A lot of water in the morning, a lot of water in the evening. I don't worry about watering in the evening. Not if the lows are going to be above like 50, then that's not generally a problem. Now if the nighttime temperatures are going to be cooler, then yes, you may need to worry about rots and mildews and all different types of things. But if it's going to be warm, I can absolutely drench these plants at between 7 and 9 o'clock and they'll be fairly dry within probably 45 minutes to an hour. That's not really long enough to develop problems. So that's what I've been doing. It's working fairly well so far, except for with, with, with that guy. He's not happy. But otherwise, it's been working okay. And I have everything on drip irrigation too. Now there are other plants I have, like the anthyrums, that I have gone ahead and just moved back into the shade, into filtered areas, because they don't really like a lot of sun as it is, and especially if it's really, really hot outside on top of pavement, that, that's that's just not gonna work for them. Same thing with some of my bromeliads. They got a little bit scorched a few weeks ago when it got unexpectedly hot and I wasn't around. That's the thing I love about cactus and succulents, for the most part, not always, but with your desert cactus, they, they're like, yeah, whatever, I like this, we can handle it. I appreciate that. And yes, so far this is just a lot of me talking because it's hot and I just, I just feel like talking to my garden friends. Sorry, not sorry. This has been driving me crazy. The milk crates aren't really working out for this Adenidia palm. It's just that I think part of it is that the ground's not level, so it kind of, it's leaning backward. It's just, it's driving me nuts. That's why I haven't planted this up to do anything with the front of it yet because I want to get it rebalanced. Just there's something from this area and over which I can't show you because there's like pieces of projects happening, but next week it should be fine. In fact, a lot of what was gonna be in this vlog was me working on that area, but that, now that's all gone. So I have to figure out a way to reshoot some of that stuff, which I don't like to do because I like a vlog to be very genuine, but in order for things to keep making sense, um, then you have, you're, you're gonna need to be a part of it. Don't worry about all that. I, that's for me to worry about. All I was saying is, they're just, there are things that are, that need to be rearranged and it been kind of bugging me a little bit. Okay, you know, I can't believe I haven't done a video on the spindle palms yet because I constantly talk about them, they're my favorite palms. One of the reasons I've been waiting is because I have been waiting for this one right here, which I purchased with one good frond on it for an okay price. Looking back on that, had I known how many spindle palms were gonna be available this year, I've seen better deals like this one. This one right here in the middle, I was cheaper than these two on the sides. Now they're all big, but I was just kind of annoyed with the grower that they're like, no, no, you're paying full price for this thing. And I was like, really? Because it has one good frond and it still has spots in it. The other fronds were all tattered and torn up. Come on now. I mean, it was still wholesale, so it was still an okay price, but I mean, come Come on now. So basically, I'm waiting to get another frond or two out of this so that I can talk about it because I want to focus on the orange on in them and that's, this one's more orange than the others. That one's gonna start to orange up as it starts to get more sun, but still, I, I, that's why I'm waiting. What I was saying before though, I have noticed recently that I've been seeing spindle palms everywhere. We had really bad hurricanes down in Florida, which is where you know a lot of the tropicals and everything come up from. And all I can figure is that some of the other palms, like maybe the queens and things that are somewhat thinner and not as stiff, maybe those didn't make it through the hurricanes for the growers. Because, you know, when the hurricanes and insurance and whatnot, if you go through and you write the plants off, you can't sell them. You can't go, you can't say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and give this a hurricane cut, get them up on irrigation, they'll be good to go next year. I'm pretty sure... I'm not positive, but if insurance is paying out on those, I'm fairly certain that once you write that off and say, no, these were damaged, they have to be destroyed. I don't think you can resell them. So that's going to set things back for a few years for the tropical plant industry, at least the people who are getting most of the stuff from Florida, which is where most of it's grown here in the United States, at least. But spindle palms, they have very, very, very stiff leaves. And Florida didn't only have the hurricanes, they also had some cold this winter too. Spindle palms can take a little bit more cold than people give them credit for. I wouldn't call them a cold hardy palm by any means, but 
those stiff fronds probably going to hold up a little bit better to damage. And that I have had mine down to 25 degrees for a short period of time. And like, that's not good. It just, it just happened. It got colder than it was supposed to. Really though, it's more about frost. They can take a little bit of frost. Not a lot. They prefer hot, warm weather. But in comparison to something like an Adenidia palm, yeah, they're probably not going to show as much damage and they're not going to be quite as sensitive to the winds and whatnot. So that's the only thing I can figure as to why all of a sudden there's just an abundance of spindle palms everywhere is because those are probably the majority of the things that held up okay to the hurricanes and the colds, right? But under that theory, under that thinking, shouldn't I also be seeing more windmill palms, pindu palms, which I mean, you don't typically see for sale up here, but when growers are grasping at straws to have plants to send out, then they're going to be sending the ones that survive. Pindu palms have nice stiff foliage. They're cold tolerant. Same thing with the windmill palms. Windmill palms can be more tattered in the hurricanes, though. And I don't know how much they're grown in the furthest, furthest part south of Florida because it's really hot down there, and they tend to do a little bit better with more of a mild climate. But they, you can grow them where it's hot, too. I've been seeing more Mediterranean fan palms, though. Those are a more cold-hardy plant. Palm. And uh, Bismarckias. So... I, I don't know. Oh, and Chinese fan palms, they're just everywhere this year. And of course, Majesty palms, but you know, those are just, well, not for me. I don't know. It's interesting. I'm just kind of thinking out loud there. What do you guys think? What might be the reason that all of a sudden they're just spindle palms everywhere? It could just be my local area. I have no idea, but they're not grown here. They come up from Florida, so this means that the growers down there have an abundance. Or maybe not necessarily an abundance, but it's just what they have and that's what people are ordering because that's all they can get i i don't know i literally have an ice pack out here that i have to keep wrapping my phone in because it keeps overheating okay that was a lot of rambling i'm so sorry just you know making lemonade out of not having the footage from this week and i've actually had a pretty good time getting some things cleared out of my head thinking out loud discussing what to do with that planter over there that you can kind of see through the chair don't forget to let me know what you think I should do with that pot. Not like anything in the world. There's two options. Add an idiot bomb, desert planter. That's it. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I have a lot of plants to work with, but those are, that's what I'm trying to tackle right now. Also, did everybody have a good fourth? Or those of you in America? America? Man, why am I talking weird? I enjoyed mine. I did a little firework video, just kind of for fun. I filmed a little bit in slow motion, added some music. I thought it was pretty and kind of soothing. I took out the loud booms. It was weird. I managed to get just an amazing spot. Like, I was underneath them. It's like I was inside of them. I've never been that close to the fireworks before. Like, there were moments where I was, like, leaning back because I was like, oh, this seems dangerous. But I mean, it was done by the city, and, you know, St. Louis is a big city. Or this was my county in St. Louis. But they, you know, they had things coned off. You couldn't get too close, but I was, like, as close as you could really get. It was so, so, so pretty. There are these really big purpley ones. I'm probably going to have all of this footage going right now in the background. So that's that's what that's about. But there are these ones that like turned into like a purpley blue color. I love those. And then it would just get super rainbowy and pretty. If what I'm saying is not lining up with what's happening in the video playing right now, I'm sorry. But yeah, that was that. It was a lot of fun. I always get a little bit torn because they're so bad for the environment. But oh my goodness, they're just so pretty. Didn't I start this by saying I'm sorry I've been rambling so much? Okay, so now, for everybody who hung out to the end of the vlog, thank you. Y'all my homies. That's the ride or die gang. Love y'all. Don't forget to like the video. It helps so much. I actually, really, it means a lot. And it helps the videos, so thank you. Subscribe as well. It's actually down there. And hit the notification bell, because if you don't, then you won't know when new videos come out. And I upload multiple times a week. Wait a minute, if y'all are the ride or die gang, y'all already know this. Some of you might be new though. So, my other stuff is down below. All my social media and whatnot. I follow you back when you follow me and I like to look at everybody's pictures and we talk and it's a good time. This poor impatient, I mean, my goodness. Like I said, I think what's happening is it's just the pavement was getting too hot and it's just, it's just cooking. I can't water it anymore. It's, it's not gonna be good for the palm or anything else in there, but not happy. I'm pretty sure that that's what happened with the impatience that was in it last year, so planning on my part. Okay, wait, what else? Oh, next week, I'm gonna be doing some stuff with my aquaponics pond. I got another filter, so it'll be a fish update for those of you who are wondering. 
The orchid video will be coming out eventually. I'm still working on it. I'm trying to spend more time editing the videos, not these, not the vlogs. The vlogs are messy. This is hangout time. And I think that's kind of part of the appeal. This is just a laid back, everybody's welcome environment, especially down in the comments. Obviously down in the comments, y'all aren't actually here with me. I'm just the weirdo sitting outside talking to my camera. You're smart, you know what I mean. Look, look how pretty these little rodeos are. I just love these. Oh wait, I forgot, I, I was saying goodbye. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Thank you all again for being such a warm, loving, inspiring, motivational part of my life. It means the world to me. Thank you so, 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 so much.